So this video is going to be a review of the digitized fluid R2 extract. And if you're interested on collecting a lot more data about your extractions for uh, espresso or pour over coffee, uh, then maybe this video is for you. So, so a little while back, I ordered uh, these from a company called DI Fluid or Digitized Fluid. Um, this is their, what they call a micro balance, which is just a, a, a scale. Um, I'm going to cover that in a separate video. This video is going to be about this, which is called the R2 extract. So let's open the box, get instructions, and here is the unit itself. Um, it comes with a little pouch case comes with a little spoon, and this is uh, that's aluminum, I think. Uh, it's definitely metal of some kind. Um, little metal spoon, the main unit, and um, this is a refractometer. Uh, this is actually the second uh, version, the second edition of this. Um, and then inside they have a little, I think this is like a microfiber cleaning cloth and a USB cable. Um, so all that stuff, we'll mostly just set that aside for now. And uh, let's take this off. Click the button and it comes on. And it's ready. So this is a refractometer, which means uh, you're going to place some fluid here in the uh, little lens area. And then this is going to analyze it and tell you how much stuff is in the fluid. Um, so these types of things are commonly used by brewers and chemists in different industries for testing the chemical concentrations in certain fluids. So again, uh, one of the more common areas is for brewing or for things that deal with sugar because this can measure the sugar concentration uh, in liquids like uh, juices or wines or beers or things like that. And so uh, this little thing can be used to, to measure the sugar content of liquids or um, the total dissolved solids of coffee, and then you can use that to calculate uh, how much extraction you're getting uh, in whatever brew process that you're using. So I'm just going to do a fairly brief review of this thing um, to see if it works and test to to see kind of, you know, how the calibration works. Um, I don't have another refractometer to test it with, so I can't really tell you much about how accurate it is other than I can test some known concentration fluids. So um, this thing also will connect to your phone. There's an app. Um, it seems more like I would say probably in the, the beta or late beta stage on the app. It tends to work, but um, there's kind of some active development still ongoing, so I wouldn't really say that it's in its final stage yet. Um, I'll link to their Discord. Um, DI Fluid does have a, a Discord where the developers are pretty active, so if you have a bug or anything, uh, you can pretty much get in direct contact to the, uh, the app developing team. So I wanted to show you the uh, DI Fluid Cafe app. Um, so whenever you open it, you have to agree to a privacy statement. Uh, one of the nice things that I like about their app is it does not require you to set up an account or anything. Uh, you can say that, you know, you agree to their stuff, um, continue as guest, and no account or anything uh, required. So that's pretty nice. Um, so the next thing is, uh, let's see if we come up here, okay, and we hit refractometer. All right, so I have to give it permissions. Okay, uh, so then I turn this on. And then it will start to look for this device. And you can see it pops up really quick. It has no problem connecting. So their Bluetooth's all well sorted. All right, and that's it. All right now you're connected and now you can control this remotely. And it's got all these settings. Um, you can set it up for any specifics that you want. You can set up a profile. Um, in your settings, you can change, you know, do you want your temperature in Celsius, Fahrenheit, what your weight, your language. Uh, it's got some settings for Grinder, and I think that's just for documentation um, to keep track of profiles. I don't know what it really does otherwise. So if you click over into the R2 Extract 
place, you can see that you've got your test. Now, if I run a test, nothing's going to happen, but you can see it does control this thing pretty well. Um, you can do brew control, which has a couple of different, uh, you know, views that you can use here. How complicated do you want it to be? Um, you can adjust what standard you want. This is basically mapping out, um, you know, your total dissolved solids versus your extraction percentage and where, uh, you know, specialty coffee, blah, 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 societies think you need to be. Um, and you can enter, you know, details on your dosing here and how much yield you got and stuff like that. And so you can map some stuff out. You've also got some other settings. If you want to change to pour over instead of espresso, do you want it to give you, you know, temperature views? How many automated tests do you want it to run? Um, settings for pour over espresso, all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of little things in the app that are potentially pretty useful if you like controlling something with an app, if you need, you know, more visual interaction, stuff like that. Um, it also connects to the scale at the same time. And so you can plot all kinds of things with, you know, weight and extraction. Uh, I've talked to them, and one thing that you can't do yet is actually pull data out of this, um, which I would find kind of useful is if somehow they could save this to a CSV. Um, but that's not out of uh, the question in the future. Um, maybe that would get added. They kind of talked about th that was something maybe they could look into. Um, like I said, one of the upsides is they do seem to have some continuing development going on because it is fairly new device, fairly new app. And so they may integrate features uh, upon request. So uh, there's just one button, you push it, it comes on. Um, and so let's do a quick calibration. So I'm going to grab some distilled water, some you know really pure water, and we'll get the thing calibrated and then we'll do some tests with, uh, I think I'm gonna use some 10% uh, sugar water and we'll see what happens. All right, so I want to do a little bit of uh, calibration testing just to see uh, how accurate this thing is to some kind of known constants. So I'm gonna test uh, some sugar water, some salt water uh, that I mixed to kind of a known concentration. So uh, I don't expect this to be a perfect test because I am not in a lab environment. Um, you know, I'm weighing things on a scale as good as I can, but you know, stuff can get contaminated. Uh, my mixtures may be a touch off, but this should at least tell us, you know, does this thing get us in the ballpark uh, for particle concentration? Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is calibrate. So this is distilled water that I'm starting off with. So there it's calibrated to 0%. Um, the next thing I'm gonna test, yeah, Clean this thing off, so you gotta make sure that you get less off. So the next thing I'm gonna test is some saline solution, some salt water that I mixed up. It's just table salt, um, and I mixed it up with uh, 10 to 100, so 10 grams and 100 grams of water. Um, it's mixed well, it's at the exact same temperature, so uh, this should read uh, just under 10% probably. Again, I don't expect it to be exactly 10. I expect it to be just a bit under 10%. Okay, so let's do a test. So 9.67, 9.66. I'll just do a couple of tests. It, it does some multi-testing automatically, but I'm gonna test a couple samples just to, to double check. So yeah, it looks like that one's stable at 9.66. Right, get that off. And uh, just to make sure that I'm, I'm good, I'm gonna test once more, uh, give the, uh, the solution a good mix just to Double check to see if anything had settled out. Shouldn't have, but always worth checking. So let's do this one and test. Yeah, so 9.66, 9.67. Um, so yeah, it is, you know, reading a little lower 
than I would expect. That could be some temperature calibration. It could be my mixture. Um, you know, the salt I use may have had some humidity in it. So whenever I weighed out 10 grams of salt, uh, maybe I had uh, salt and a little bit of water from the humidity. Um, like I said, I'm not using lab calibrated samples here. Uh, you can buy those, by the way, to, uh, to test these. You can get uh, lab grade, you know, guaranteed uh, percentage concentration stuff. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test some sugar water. Now the sugar water is also at 10%, but sugar, uh, they actually measure with a scale called bricks and it will not read at 10%. Um, it should read about eight and a half percent, uh, with this concentration because there's like a 0.85 conversion between, uh, total dissolved solids, which this reads total dissolved solids. Um, and bricks. So that, like I said, there's a 0.85 conversion between uh, total dissolved solids and bricks. So this is 10% bricks. It should read out at about eight and a half TDS or a little low. It does look pretty low there. So maybe I didn't get this mixed up good. Let me look. Yeah, that looks way, way low. Um, so let me uh, check my mixture. There we go. So yeah, uh, that first one, uh, I just didn't have the uh, the solution mixed up good enough. So yeah, it is reading a bit low uh, compared to where I would expect. Again, I, I would think that this would be closer um, to eight and a half than that. But you know, it's, it's not too far off. You're looking at just a fraction of a percent um, concentration wrong on both of these. So it's not too bad. And again, it could be that the sugar that I used um, wasn't fully dehydrated, right? And so my concentration that I mixed at 10% may actually be under 10% because of humidity and other factors. So um, with that, you're not going to get, you know, I'm not getting lab grade results here because, well, I'm not using lab grade components. So let me do one more. Um, just to make sure, again, that I've got everything kind of dialed in. Yeah, 8.26. So um, as far as uh, to convert that, by the way, well, they're ticked up to a little bit more. So with that, 8.27, let me do the math really quick. So that's showing 9.73% sugar. Um, and again, I was shooting for 10. And that's not too far off considering that I probably, you know, don't have a true 10% solution. And given humidity impact, it is likely that my solution um, is less than 10% because the sugar and salt that I used probably had humidity content that could um, certainly skew their weights so that, again, whenever I measured out 10 grams, I, I didn't actually have a full 10 grams. I actually had some moisture in there, and that would bias this test to read a little low, um, which means, you know, I, I'm mostly happy with that, right? I mean, obviously, I would love it if it came out to be perfect, but um, the reality is I'm not paying the money for, uh, you know, guaranteed 10% sugar or saline solution. Uh, to test this thing. So um, I would say it's pretty close, right? You're going to get within a fraction of a percent of where you would be. Again, um, if this is supposed to be eight and a half, the other was supposed to be 10, <clears throat> they're within 0 0.2, 0 0.3%, even given uh, the problems, like I said, in the materials that I'm using to mix. So even with humidity content, I'm still able to get a result within point you know, two or 3%, um, which means this is probably going to be fine for testing coffee. So some of the features of this device, you can see it does have display. It tells you the battery level. Um, you've got the little dish for reading. Um, this is also, I believe, IP67 water resistant. So you can dunk this thing to clean it um, and it shouldn't have any problems. It does have a USB-C charging port um, and you know just the one control button. So basically the way this thing works, uh, you just tap the button and it will do a test. If you tap and then tap again and hold, it will do calibration. If you do two quick double taps, it will give you the information um, on the device. 
So overall, you know, my introductory review is it seems to do what it's purported to do. Um, it does seem to read total dissolved solids. It seems to do that fairly accurately. It's very easy to use um, and it's not overly expensive. You know, uh, for comparable devices, these things can get very, very expensive, hundreds of dollars. Uh, this costs 230 if you buy it by itself. Um, there is also uh, the package that they sell that I bought that includes the scale. Um, and that you get a bit of a discount um, if you buy them both at once. So that's a $300 package to get um, the little... R2 extract and the micro balance together, 300 bucks. I think if you, you know, sign up for something on their website, you get like a 5% discount. Um, you know, it's worth pointing out again, I paid my own money for this. They didn't send anything to me. This is, you know, something I bought for myself. So there's no involvement there at all. Um, but, you know, the app environment looks to be uh, developing. It, it's pretty good right now, but they are adding features and doing tweaks. And um, on their Discord, you can talk to them about stuff and they'll, you know, say whether or not they might be interested in adding different features. The scale, uh, I'll cover in a different video. Um, but so far, I just wanted to talk about the R2 extract itself. And I'd say, you know, so far, I, I don't want to say that I'm overly impressed, but um, it seems to work and it seems to be fairly accurate. Um, seems to be decently made. It's well packaged. There seems to be good app support, development support currently. Um, I got it fairly quickly when I ordered. There was no hassle there. So um, I would say at this point, um, I'm optimistic and I look forward to being able to use this. Um, as you can see, by the way, it's got a little auto off feature to save battery. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking forward to using this and to test some things in my coffee setup. Uh, whether or not you feel that that's worth it, um, that's up to you. I personally would say, eh, you know, for 230 bucks, uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that very many people buy this. There's not a huge use for the information that this puts out for most people. Um, so this is kind of a specialized little device that nerds kind of would pick up. Um, so if you're a nerd and you want to spend 230 bucks, then yeah, I, I would say it's maybe worth taking a look at. Um, anyway, if you have any questions or comments, as always, just feel free to leave them below. Thanks.